What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. A bunch of stuff to get into today, including maybe the possible reason why the Nintendo Switch is being bricked by these third-party docks, which is, it's kind of interesting because some of this information has been out there since May of 2017. It's been out there for a while, and hey, wouldn't you know it, No Man's Sky is coming to the Xbox with apparently its biggest update ever. So today, guys, let's get started. Today, let's start with No Man's Sky because it's had a, we'll say, troubled past, right? For when it released, people were pointing out that there were a lot of things missing, claiming false advertisement. They actually had to pull stuff off of Steam because it was kind of false advertisement. At least it was deemed and ruled as false advertisement. And since then, they've been trying to make it up to the gamer consistently with all of these updates. They patched in like this multiplayer. And since then, the fans of the game have at least been okay or at least happy with where they've been going with these free updates. And yeah, they, they did owe the consumer a lot with how that game launched to kind of where it is now. And they've been at least building some goodwill. And it looks like they're releasing what they have dubbed as No Man's Sky Next. It's gonna be their biggest update ever. And it's going to be coming to the Xbox One as well. And this was done in a tweet by 505 Games. Now they say the new update is coming in summer of 2018. It's gonna be a free update for the PS4 and the PC, and then the Xbox version will come with it on the disc. And they also say on the box art, 4K and HDR compatible for the Xbox One as well. No details on that. Maybe that's just part of the box art, or maybe they have more information to tell us later. But th this is at least good because the one thing I, when, when No Man's Sky came out, I was really worried that they were going to give up on the game and pretty much hide. They kind of did for a while, actually. I think it was about three weeks. They'd said nothing, and then they came out and said, we're going to work on this. We're going to fix it. It's going to be a game that kind of kind of evolves over time, and it has, at least. If you bought it now, you might not understand some of the issues people had back when it launched, because it's it, it feels and plays so much different now than it did then, and now we're going to see what this new update is all about, because while it's it's been a while since it came out, right? It came out on, uh, what, 2016? It's been a long time. This could finally be a full game, or maybe closer to what they originally showed us, and it evolved kind of like a games as a service, at least, I guess, all the updates have been been free it's just fans of the series had to wait what two years almost to get to get the game they originally thought they were getting so at least they didn't give up on it it's just a shame it took this long let's get into the next piece of news the switch has now crossed four million units sold in japan this is per famitsu now of course we get different sales numbers from famitsu and media creates famitsu generally tracks online sales as well Although there are times where, for some reason, Famitsu will report less than Media Create, and that's where it kind of throws me. But as far as we can tell, Famitsu does also report uh, online sales. So Amazon, stuff like that. Media Create was only off by 40 or so thousand units from that 4 million mark. But right now, Famitsu has said that it has crossed the 4 million mark. It seems to be at least tied with the GameCube's lifetime sales in Japan at 4.04. 4 million. Now, the next stop would be the Nintendo 64 at 5.5 million, and when it does get there, which it's probably going to get there, I want to say probably by the end of this year, maybe sooner, depending on when Pokemon comes out, and Smash, of course, will give it that nice boost as well. Uh, at that point, we're, it, it's the PS4 is the next milestone for them. The Wii, well, I think will take a little longer to reach, but the PS4, when they get to the N64's numbers, will be pretty much within striking distance. So, yeah, they're probably going to pass the Nintendo 64. It's crazy that they passed the GameCube in a little over a year, right? Like a year and three weeks or something like that. So, uh, yeah, the Switch is for real in Japan. And, yes, it does line up more so with their 3DS sales than their console sales. As we're seeing with previous data from the GameCube, the Nintendo 64 matches up much more with the 3DS. Next up, let's talk about THQ Nordic remastering another game. Now, they've been kind of remastering a couple games now, and their latest one that they're going to be doing is Red Faction Guerrilla. A lot of people probably remember this game because people or fans of the Red Faction series, even people who weren't, who just picked this one up randomly at the game store one day, liked this game a lot. It had some really cool stuff to it, big open world. And then the coolest thing about this that really took Red Faction to the next level from what it was on like the PS2 was this like next generation of destructible environments. They already kind of had destructible mechanics in the PS2 version that I remember, but when they went to the 360 here, and I'm, that's where I remember playing it, uh, it was on the 360, and man, when you would like kind of blow up buildings, they would have like chain reactions, you could do like these mines everywhere, you could smash it with this big sledgehammer, but they 
are remastering this thing, and it is going to be called, and this, I don't know why they always have to try to fix up these remastered things, how to do puns. Uh, it's going to be called Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered Edition. It's coming to the PS4, Xbox One, and PC second quarter of 2018. It will have, of course, f the full feature, the four, full 4K, fully reworked graphics, uh, textures, everything so that it looks much better on a 4K TV as opposed to what we're used to on the 360. Improved shadow rendering, improved lighting, shade, shader and uh, post-processing rework. Basically everything to make this game look better on the next generation systems and it looks like it'll also have, of course, with 4K, the Xbox One X and PS4 Pro support. I'm excited because this was a great game on the 360 that I remember playing, so it's going to be really cool to see it come over to the PS4 and the Xbox One and the PC. Uh, no Switch announcement, but this this one could have been in the works prior. THQ Nordic is, of course, also working on the Switch, so it's not like they're just away from that system. They're kind of working on a couple different projects, and we're not really sure when this one went into production, but it is it is coming out. The second quarter is in, what, a month or two months now? So this is going to be hitting store shelves soon, so that's pretty exciting. All right, next up, let's talk about the Switch USB compliance that people have been questioning a lot recently, especially after people have now been digging online after Nyko docks have been bricking switches. People have also pointed out other ones like the Fast Snail dock that has also bricked switches. Pretty much, it seems like most third-party switch docks are damaging systems to where they won't turn on. So naturally, people are going digging online looking for answers to these questions that Nintendo has not really provided any to. So what do we find? Well, we find a Google Plus post from Nathan Kay back in May of 2017. It's been online for a long, long time. And basically he goes over a ton of testing that seems to prove that the Switch is not at all compliant with USB-C protocols. Now his posts go on for a while, it is a bit of a read. What I'll do though is I'll leave a link down in the description to the most, I guess, the one that has the most information, you can check it out. It was shared everywhere. Uh, Reddit was posting about it, I know Reset Era, Nintendo Life, uh, going into everybody was basically posting this everywhere after it was found and dug up. But the biggest quote that really most people took away was this. The Nintendo Switch Dock USB Type-C power supply is not USB PD spec compliant. As a result, it does not play nice with other USB-C devices. This means you should strongly consider only using the Nintendo Switch Dock adapter only with the Nintendo Switch and Dock. Additionally, it also seems the Nintendo Switch Dock does not play nice with other USB PD chargers. This means you're forced to use a Nintendo brand power supply. And of course, there's only one of those and it's about 30 to $40 depending on your market. So it's not cheap to get another adapter, but the thing that I have noticed is Nathan seems to mostly talk about that the only time there were really big issues, and this may be why we didn't really see any bricking until the Nyko dock came about, is when it's on the dock. It seems to do all kinds of just weird stuff on the dock. Throws up a lot of flags, uh, pulls and, and pushes power when it shouldn't be. It's, it, it's just some weird stuff when audio and video get mixed in with the display port. So this is very odd. This might also be why most people haven't had anything brick when they're using their battery backups or when they're, when they're just plugged into a wall with a more powerful phone charger. They all, he also talked about how the Switch seems to be very power hungry and pull more amperage than what the power plug is actually offering, where it needs 2.6 amps, it's, giving, it's, it's pulling three. So it's weird to see this, and I think the big problem right now is no one knows what they can plug into their Switch, and that's a problem. All we know is Nintendo first, brand stu first party stuff should be safe, but there's no Nintendo uh, portable battery bank, for example, right? We don't have that, and most people want to use one. So it seems like you're probably safe, but no one can guarantee it. No one. And, and Nintendo hasn't released one, which is kind of a shame. So I'm hoping maybe they do release one, or maybe they release more information. Look, these third-party ones we have, we have checked out. They are safe to use. You can buy these. They should be partnering with some kind of battery bank that they can guarantee works and put it out there for sale. Much like they did with the uh, like uh, SanDisk for the memory card slots, or memory cards, just do something like that with the battery banks. That's the biggest problem. We don't know what is gonna damage our Switch. So for now, until we get more information, stick with the first party dock, stick with the first party adapter, because who knows what's gonna happen when you plug in any random cable now to the Switch. And a lot of people are concerned about it not being USB compliant because it seems like uh, Nintendo cheaped out. Well, I will say this, back then, 
when they were in development, USB compliance was uh, sketchy at best for USB-C because it was an open platform. It, it was open and it, it was hard to, I guess it was hard to say what was standard and what wasn't. And when they were developing this thing alongside NVIDIA, they just, I guess they went with what they had and they decided that way. And now we have at least a clearer picture on USB-C, but Microsoft still doesn't think it's ready for the mainstream. So that should tell you a lot right there. If they're not ready to really be putting that on everything, um, there's still a lot of stuff to work out with USB-C and kind of standardizing it. And I think it still has a long way to go, but the real problem is it seems like it's hardware and Nintendo would have to work out a revision that they can release and uh, we know about one revision that's probably coming for the Tegra. I don't know if they're going to fix any of the power stuff involved as well. Although we did also point out a different power circuit that appears to be there from Dataminer. So, hey, I guess we'll see with whatever this new Switch revision is if they fix any of this stuff. And finally, in our last bit of news, let's talk about the PlayStation VR because it got a price drop. And this doesn't appear to be the version one that I got for $200, which was an absolute steal, by the way, since it doesn't have HDR pass-through, but I don't really use HDR anyway. And it came with Gran Turismo, pretty good deal. Anyway, the 2.0 version is getting a price drop down to $299, and that is the now MSRP price. So you could still see some deals down to $250 maybe, but right now, $299.99 with everything you need to start playing is a pretty good deal because the kind of the lineup has been bolstered a bit. You have Super Hot, of course, you have Moss, and my favorite one right now to play is Wipeout Omega HD Collection. I played it on camera uh, two days ago, and it is a great time. I still play it now. The biggest thing you need to get around, and that's hopefully in the next version of the PlayStation VR, is all the cables. There's so many cables to hook up. So whenever they get around to that, hopefully it's the next version where they fix that, maybe even make it go completely wireless. That would be awesome. But at $299.99, if you already have a PS4, this is definitely an interesting thing to look into. If you've been curious about VR, it's becoming so cheap now that it's it's almost a, a why not type purchase just to try it out. So uh, I would check it out. Maybe they'll eventually have some bundles as well outside of that. But Hey, $299.99, you're going to get some more people in as more people buy, more games will be developed, and I guess VR will hopefully get pushed forward further because I think they could do some cool things with it. Ace Combat, I think is going to be really neat, and I would like to see them get into maybe like a Mobile Suit Gundam type game for it that is uh, maybe follows along the line of, of uh, Gundam Wing or something. There'd be some fun stuff, I think, and uh, here's hoping they get into that. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for Newswave today. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, guys. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave a bunch of comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it is the Nintendo Switch USB compliance. Let me know what you think about this whole situation because Nathan definitely talked about how there, there needs to be more testing. Uh, this was from May, so firmware has changed, right? Things could be different now than they were then. So someone does need to test this further. I would be very curious because Nathan has all of his information for him to go back and test again with the newer 5.0.1 firmware. That's where we're on now. 5.0.1 firmware and see if his results are different from what he had before because he was testing this back in May. So I'd be curious to see how things have changed, maybe even, even a little bit. Also, let me know what you think about the PlayStation VR dropping in price. Is it now interesting to you that it's becoming so cheap that uh, maybe it's time to, to, to jump into VR and see if, if, if the hype is worth it? Because it's pretty cool when you get the right game like Wipeout and everything just clicks. It is an awesome experience. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday morning for Newswave.